the Simple Steps Personal Finance Podcast, bringing personal finance to you step by step. This is episode one. My name is Chris Sefton, and I'm the owner of Simple Steps Personal Finance. This podcast is designed to introduce you to personal finance in a way that demystifies this murky money world and teaches you the basics so that you can go out there and win. When you know what you need to do about money, the whole thing becomes a lot clearer, much less intimidating, and much easier to navigate. That will bring you peace of mind and a real sense of control over your finances. And that's why my motto here at SSPF is control your money, change your life, create your future. Money is the common denominator in our everyday lives. We work to earn it. We spend it on the things we need and the things that we want. To many of us, it provides security. To some, it provides self-esteem. It's the medium of exchange in virtually every transaction we make. Like it or not, money is the currency of daily life. And as such, I think it's only right that we learn how to keep it reined in. Money is a lot like children. Give it boundaries to stick to and it will thrive inside them. Let it run loose and, well, it will disobey you its entire life. The reason I say this is because very few people actually tell their money what to do. For many people, their money kind of happens to them. They earn it, it somehow gets spent, and then they limp to the next payday. Then they get some more, spend it somehow again, and you get the picture, so the cycle goes. It's unsurprising then that steering so close to the wind like this, it doesn't take much to steer the boat off course. A last minute holiday, an expensive Christmas, some furniture on sale, a great deal on a car. When your money just flows over you, it doesn't tend to get caught. It tends to flow straight down the sink. Those great deals get caught by the credit card instead, or the personal loan, or the HP agreement. Yet if you happen to your money, if you impose your will on it, give it boundaries to stick to, surprisingly, it will behave. Planning where your money goes will actually result in more of it staying in the bucket than leaking down the hole. So we're going to empower ourselves here on the SSPF podcast. We're going to face up to that money, tell her who's boss, and put it on the naughty step. We're going to learn how to handle it, how best to spend less of it whilst getting more out of it, lower spending on the needs so we've more to enjoy our wants. Want to take a holiday that isn't sponsored by a MasterCard? Want to buy a car that doesn't have to tow a loan behind it? Want to be comfortable when you retire, even retire early or swap to a job you actually like? Want to provide security for your family? If you've had enough of having too much month left when the money runs out, of earning too much to feel broke, then stay tuned. That's what we're here for. If you wanted to get in shape and lose weight, you'd know how to. You'd Google it. You read nutrition articles and weight loss websites. You check out videos on YouTube for inspiration. But how likely would you be to succeed in replicating it? Not very. You can read all the different approaches, know the science behind it, but in a world of information, it's easy to get lost. Without a guiding hand, you can't see the wood for the trees. Now, if you hired a personal trainer who told you how to eat and how to exercise, your chances would improve, wouldn't they? You'd now have someone to sift through all that information and create a plan solely for you, discarding everything that doesn't apply and giving you the 1% that does. The result? You get thinner and fitter. Now my job is to coach you in personal finance. In order to control the behaviour of the face looking back at you from the mirror, you need to know what good money behaviour looks like. That's where personal finance coaching comes in. I can give you the information that you don't yet know practical help about all aspects of your personal finance life. With the emphasis on personal, after all, the truth about money is simple. Spend less than you earn, make good behaviour automatic, monitor bad behaviour so you can eliminate it over time. Simple. So I'm going to offer solid guidance for you, impartial, non-judgmental coaching. We'll do this by taking a journey through my seven simple steps. It's a practical framework for you to judge your financial health against, a way to understand where you are, what to focus on next. And along the way, we'll cover the basics on bank accounts, new ICEs, 
loans, credit cards, saving money on insurance, groceries, everyday life, all of the tools we're going to need to wrestle back control of our money. Now, I want you to not be frightened of money. I want you to be empowered to control it and make it work for you. A savings account with some rainy day cash. No outstanding balance on your credit card at the end of the month. Knowing that you're not spending the gas bill money when you buy a new jacket. Save up for a new car. Put together a deposit for that home you've always wanted. I'll tell you, a car gets much better fuel economy when it's not dragging a loan behind it. And the settee in your own house is much more comfortable than one in a rented flat. Now why am I doing this? I've made the same mistakes with money as everyone else. But I had this love of personal finance that started to bubble through the muck and come to the fore. I couldn't avoid the knowledge of what I should have been doing and started to stop my bad ways. Out went the debt, out went having no savings, out went my leaky bucket of money. I plugged the holes and I started to put the money to work. I told it to work harder, you know, protect me from bad luck, provide me a home, secure my retirement, allow me to take holidays and, and drive a nice car. I intentionally told it what to do, where to be, and it listened. Every month I sit down and I plan where the money will go. Now 90% of that doesn't change. I have a mortgage, utilities, groceries, petrol, a gym membership. They all hold their hands out on the first of the month. But that other 10%, that's where the magic happens. I give myself spending money and I can buy whatever I want, completely free of guilt or worry. I put money away in my holiday fund. I put money away for my car tax and insurance so I don't get sideswiped every year. I put money away to replace things I know will need replacing, like the car needing a new clutch or one of my many gadgets becoming outdated or bricked. I even put money away for my old age. What would you plan to do with your money each month? What are the important things in your life? And if you were to compare a list of them with a list of where your money actually goes, do you think they'd match? Don't answer that. Answer it in five podcasts time. Answer it when you've been given the tools to make meaningful changes. Answer it once your journey is underway. Welcome to the world of Simple Steps Personal Finance. Next episode, I'm going to outline my seven simple steps. In the meantime, though, think about your why. Create a picture in your mind of what you want your life to look like. Hold that picture. All the things you want from life. Controlling your money will pave the way to them. Speak to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Simple Steps Personal Finance Podcast. This podcast is copyright of Simple Steps Personal Finance Limited. For more information, check out my website at sspf.co.uk. A big thanks to Partners in Line for the music used in this podcast. See you next time 